Good morning and welcome back to Cards and Coffee. We explore parts of self, or I should say we dialogue with parts of self using the internal family systems, or they're actually called the interactive cards. Okay. And just to make sure I'm giving credit where credit is due. These cards are from an internal family systems. Uh, Oh, it doesn't have the therapist, but where's the... Okay, well, how about this? Everything that you need to know about this deck is in the description box, along with the other decks that I use. Anything you need to know about what this whole series is about is also in the description box, including... Um, questions for your own personal reflection. If you resonate or relate to the image that comes out, um, certainly, you know, watch kind of the questions that I'm, I'm asking, which may be very different than what I put in the description box, but, um, what the, the cards that come out aren't ex exclusive to what the part is talking about and even when I watch the playback I'm like wow how come I didn't say that which happens to me all the time when I'm doing readings anyway do your own personal work and all right we got a card let's see which um part wants to be oh, wants to be seen and heard today Ooh. Man. Well, let me show you the image. What would you say? Like a school marm? Is that what they're called? Marm? Uh, she's got this list of all the, you know, things she should do and her ruler in her hand. Um, she looks very stern. She looks very old. She looks very mean, uh, judgmental, but her list, and it's a scroll, right? It's just like, brrr. brush, this is on her list. Brush your teeth, comb your hair, wash your hands, stand up straight, be polite, eat your vegetables, do your homework, be punctual, clean your room, break the yard, take out the trash, clean the garbage, Wash the car, be nice to your boss, get a promotion, pay your taxes, give to the poor, remember everyone's birthday, be politically active, save the whales, save the world. Wow, do I know this voice that I've worked through many years of my own uh, therapy. Many um, people who identify as highly sensitives um, you can Google the highly sensitive personality trait. You know, we kind of have this like just giant, you know, list of all that we feel we have to do, should do. There's a perfectionism in there element, not necessarily to highly sensitives, but, um, I think it's part of being a highly sensitive and part of, you know, programming. Uh, and highly sensitives are very conscientious. So we always want to do well. We don't want to hurt other people. We want to, um, you know, there's just a whole list of shoulds uh, and that can become, you know, problematic. So let's just see what this part, I'm sorry, kind of went on a, like a little space cadet journey there. Um, let's see what this part has to say. If you're watching and you're new to my channel, um, I'm formulating the cards by using the chakras, the energy centers, 
Um, so we have, I have, I want, I can, or I will, um, uh, I love, I speak, or I hear, so throat chakra communication, I see third eye chakra, and I know, you know, the higher, wiser self, the crown chakra. So that's how I formulated these questions. Um, probably the readings that I post next week, I'm going to ask uh, things a little bit differently and probably eliminate um, this structure. Well, let's see. Okay. So what do I have? What does this part have? Oh, word. Okay. Okay. So we got two major arcanas that popped out. We've got the Hermit. Okay. Which is the card of Virgo. Um, you know, Virgos also have their big laundry lists of all the things that they should do. You know, there's just a lot of this internal critic, uh, perfectionism, um, per, uh, voice inside. Um, okay. Something that I want to, um, create or um, something that I want to build, okay? It's slow, methodical, uh, and it's moving. This is a kind of a Taurian card. Jesus could almost be my personal card here, but um, I have Virgo Sun, Taurus Moon, and Scorpio Rising. Uh, so that's an interesting dynamic. Um, and then we have the emperor. So, you know, all the rules, the structures, the laws, the, um, governance, uh, the per people in control and in power, you know, so I feel like this person has to, Right. I, I need to back up regarding the hermit. So the hermit is seeking sort of like truth. And it goes to the top of the mountain. It goes into isolation. It figures out or makes peace with or makes meaning um, regarding life, life. Um, regarding, you know, why things happen, maybe why things have happened in their life or in life in general. What, you know, I always say, like, why do good things happen to bad people? Why do bad things happen to good people? Um, and, and, you know, it's kind of like he's, he takes an active, he makes an active decision and, and chooses to go and ponder these things, to get, to go within. Um, it's not anything that's been forced up upon him. It's like the seeker, okay? So, I feel like this person has a need. Okay, so we're looking at the base chakra. This is to feel safe. Has a need to get approval, to it seeks approval um, from those that are in power, right? That that so that it can feel safe. So that <clears throat> maybe it keeps another part safe. It says, I, if I do all of these things and I do them, I, I complete my shoulds, I complete my list, then no one can get angry at me. I don't get in trouble. You know, I don't break any rules. Um, God forbid, you know, I would, I would break rules. 
Um, but I'm, it's a, it's, it's a lonely place to be. Why am I yelling? I don't know. Okay, let me take a breath. You know, remember that the parts, we don't want to like judge the parts. We want to be curious about the parts because they're, they're always there helping us or they believe that they are, um, you know, the dialogues that we have, whether it's with the, you know, internal critic or, you know, a judge or whoever, um, they, they believe that they're there on our behalf. You just have to dig down deep, deep. Um, but anyway, we're having just an initial dialogue here. Okay. I want, so we're now looking at the sacral chakra, which is, you know, partnership relationships. I want courage. I want strength. I want <clears throat> I want to um, be in control of my oh, more impulsive, more primal uh more um, immature even self. Uh, I, I want to, you know, keep that all under control. Strength card is also a Leo. So we have, did I tell you that we have Virgo, kind of Taurus, Aries, and then we've got a Leo here. You know, it's kind of like I feel I am worthy, I'm courageous, I'm strong. If I'm if I'm this person then yeah. yeah then things will go better for me things will go well for me um <laughs> the songs that pop in my head are crazy I haven't thought of the song in a million years, and I don't even know if it relates to this, but um, what I was hearing was like you buttoning up, you know, you just kind of like button up yourself. And I was hearing, um, I think the song is called Suit and Tie. I used to listen to this CD all the time. It was a Justin Timberlake CD. I'll, again, I'll put, post everything in the description box, so I'll look that up. Um, and you know, it doesn't always, it doesn't always make sense to this particular part, but if it's popping in my head and you know, it's so random, I'm going to post it because it could speak to something that y'all are, uh, dealing with. Okay. I can, or I will. So we're looking at the solar plexus, which is you know, um, it, it's the strength, if you will, um, to move forward, to take action, to go for what you want. It's the seat of power. It's the seat of, did I say action? Um, you know, in this area, you can feel calm and empowered, or you can feel, you know, um, uh, anger even, afraid, uh, powerless. Um, okay, so let's see. I can. So it's empowered. It's an empowered energy center. I can or I will what? Hmm. 
I got the temperance card here. <clears throat> okay, so we got the six of cups. So this is the past, this is nostalgia, this is, you know, thinking about simpler times, thinking about, you know, when I was a kid, um, uh, your childhood. I really see this card as more about dealing with healing the inner child. Okay. There's a six of there's six of cups here, and let me see if there's a if he's anywhere close by. No, he's not. Okay. Right here is this. There's a figure. This figure we see in the Six of Swords, which is moving into calmer waters, okay? So he's out of the waters. He's walking this path right back to the castle. But there's this almost like fantasy thing over here. So he's moved into calmer waters, maybe even helped someone else move into calmer waters. And it's a Six as well. And this is Six of Cups. And so it's kind of like this going back to... You know, I've, I've come through something difficult, and so maybe emotionally I'm going back to, you know, maybe even what could have been, what should have been, what I wished, you know. But here, there's an opportunity almost like to do some inner child work, to be there for yourself, to reparent the self, to, um, okay, okay. need to stay on track with this person here um part of self okay and then anxiety you know the thing that keeps us up all night okay it, it's the the thoughts that um thoughts and fears rather than faith Right. I mean, I think this person's energy would be better spent on prayer and meditation than worry. Than the hanged man, card of Pisces. You know, I, I, I can and I will get in trouble. If I do not hold back, if I do not, uh, you know, the hanged man card can be, you know, an opportunity to gain enlightenment, but it also can be a card of, you know, restricting and holding back, um, you know, being a martyr, um, sacrifice, sacrificing. And I feel like this part is like, I just, I want to, um, I don't, I don't, yeah, temperance is at the bottom, okay, being patient, um, temperance, balance, okay. Um, you know, I think this part just does not want to get in anyone's What's, what's the term? God, I can never remember this when I'm doing the readings. Ugh. Um, it wants to, it wants to look good 
outwardly. It wants to present itself or help the wounded self to appear good. Um, to It, it 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 worries potentially about things that it's done in the past maybe um as a child the natural creative impulses the actions that we took just because you know we're kids and we uh feel you know, beautiful part of being a child is this like curiosity and a natural sense of creativity as you're exploring, as you're just acting on the pure impulse. Um, you know, and maybe this part just doesn't want the wounded child to experience getting in trouble as it did when it was a kid. You know, so so it 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 worries about that, and so it's going to restrict itself. It's going to hold itself back. It's going to really need to to stay in control. Um, yeah. Okay. I love. coming up on a full moon in Virgo so that's interesting that this is uh, the card that's this part of self that is coming up it's really important that as we uh, try to figure out what we're doing what we want to create moving forward that we keep that highly critical Virgo voice Virgo's wonderful don't get me wrong obvi uh, but um to be critical harsh hard on itself uh so we kind of want to make sure that we're we're in a in more of a flow and more of a taking in kind of what's What's showing up? What what do I have? What am I feeling, you know, as I'm going through the rather than like having this list of all the things I have to do. It's okay to like daydream about the things that we want to create. I'm going off into a whole other reading. Um but I feel like it's it's interesting and important that this part is coming up because that energy is is Let's see, the 27th, what day is today? The 20th, okay, today is the 23rd. So in four days, we've got the full moon. Okay. In Virgo. So I love, all right. <laughs> all right. So we've got the world at the bottom of the deck. Okay. So this is, uh, Saturnian energy. Uh, there's a sense of completion, also a sense of the beginning, okay? Uh, cycling up, one cycle. Um, okay, so we've got the Seven of Pentacles, the Nine of Cups, and another Nine, the Nine of Pentacles, okay? So it loves having this um, sense of self-satisfaction, of self-fulfillment, um, of creating what it wants and how it wants to feel uh, to being independent, 
to being able to do things on its own, to create what it wants on its own, it really likes almost like that ability to self-motivate, to um, know when, uh, when to stop, when to go, how far to go, um, you know, Again, odd. I just heard Mary Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? I'm going to look up the background to that children's rhyme. I don't have my pen and paper, but okay, so I'm going to do that. So it really loves that. Okay, it loves doing the hard work. It, it loves that it's, you know, a, a doer. It loves that it's a doer. It's got its big list here, right? Okay. I speak. What does it say? How does it communicate? You know, that's also about listening, right? Hmm. My cards got this, and my walls where I had like the plastic sheeting and the curtains up and just different, just different areas are kind of coated in like a, I, what I guess is smoke from the fireplace. Uh, ooh, is that called soot or what is that? But all around the edges of this particular deck, probably because it's covered in my oils um, as well, really got nailed with whatever residue that is from, you know, really just I used a lot of candles to keep warm, to keep the light, you know, to keep, to be able to see uh, the fireplace. Um, so it's been really interesting pulling things down now to get back to life, back to reality. All right. I communicate. Okay. Ah, page of, two more pages. Okay. Page of Pentacles. Wheel of Fortune. Page of Swords. And the World. Yeah, I communicate all that I have to do. I communicate with others. Maybe I even exaggerate a little bit. You know, maybe I even... You know, I could be one of those people that <laughs> runs around and, um, oh, God, I'm thinking of somebody I know personally, um, that, you know, they're just, oh, I'm so busy. I have so much I have to do. And they go down the, the list of, you know, 40 million things that they have to do in a day, and it's exhausting just to hear their list, Right. But it's, it's like they, they kind of like, like to talk about it. You know, there's like a, a, a sense of their worthiness and their value if they're so freaking busy all the time. You know, like if they weren't that busy, then they wouldn't be, you know, doing enough or they wouldn't be enough, right? There, it's, it's more of this like I'm, a, I'm doing, not a, I'm a human doing, not a human being. Right. And, you, you, you know, we all know those people. I mean, you, you, you ask them, well, how are you? And you, you get the laundry list of all the things that they're, they're, they're doing, you know, and you're, uh, it's a lot. Okay. But you also get the exasperation of, oh, you know, oh, oh, so much I have to handle, you know, and of course, we praise people that are able to accomplish so much. And did I say that word? Did I say accomplish? Accomplish so much. Uh, why? Well, they've been taught. Oh, 
Oh, no lazy here. No rest for you. You better be doing and accomplishing or, you know, maybe you get in trouble. <laughs> this just reminded me of, let me go back to this card. Okay. This reminds me, reminds me of me as a kid when, you know, I liked school. I loved school. I wanted to be a teacher. I played school. Like, I, I mean, I just loved school. And, um... It was important that I got A's and, you know, star stickers and, and all of that. It's kind of like this person taking their little star um, and going to the person in authority and saying, you know, hey, look, look what I did. And so long as you're getting good grades, well, then I guess good for you. Not good for you. Okay, then you're good. Then you're good enough. Then you'll get attention. Then you won't get in trouble, even. Well, I hope I remember everything I was going to look up. Um... Okay, I see. Okay. Okay. I see. So, third eye chakra. What do you What do you see? like a taskmaster. What do you see? I went to a Catholic school. She's reminding me of you nuns. Yeah, as a kid, I could, I, I just remember feeling like why are you, why did you choose this life if you're going to act like that? You know, just angry, bitter, mean, cruel, lacking in compassion. And I don't want to go off on a tangent. Okay, I see. King of Swords. Okay. So the uh, Libran energy here. Um... Let's see, we also have Sagittarius and um, Saturn, which I don't know if the world, I don't think the world represents any particular sign, although Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and um, Aquarius, they're all very, um, they're the, it's not the rigid. What's it called? <laughs> they like stability. Okay. Uh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, this would be Libra. Gemini or Aquarius, but an air, air sign, air energy. Um, so, you know, it's kind of like, mm, what do I see? What I perceive is that there is, um, justice. There is a right way. There is a wrong way. There is a manner in which this is their thought process, okay? This is air energy. This is the thought process. Um, which 
isn't necessarily, it's not using this chakra center in the highest potential, right? So if we're looking at a, a if we're looking at a part like this, there's a block, there's a, there's something there in that energy center, right? So yes, could this be a higher perspective? Could this be an ability to look at a higher perspective, to see that there isn't only one truth? Yes, this particular part doesn't see it that way. They do see the, the, the edge of the sword. You know, I'm, I'm, what's sticking out to me is that this sword, there's like this, a side that's kind of white or illuminated. And then there's like a darker side, like a blue. And what's popping out to me is the shadow side of it. So there is one, there's one side that that is the right side. And that's in the shadow. So, you know, there's a right and there's a wrong. This, this person is a shooter. There's a right way. There's a wrong way. And we move towards the right way. We plan our life out. very methodically, practically, um, based on experience. I mean, I've got, you know, you can get in bad trouble if you don't do what's right. Five of Swords at the bottom of the deck. I don't want to get yelled at. I don't want to get you know, cause conflict, strife, trouble. There's a right and a wrong. Who's the winner? Who's the loser? I'm not going to be the loser. That's for sure. I know. I know. So nice. Now. It's going to be 75. Oh, Ooh. I don't know. That's a lot. I know. That's not that bad. All right. Ace of Pentacles. Knight of Wands. King of Pentacles. And the Lovers. Marriage card at the bottom of the deck. Uh, joy, stability, celebration. Um, you know, there's an opportunity here. And when it is presented, like I, I, I want to move towards it. Okay, let me get a clear thought here. How do I want to say this? What's underneath this card? Um, <clears throat> got Gemini, King of Pentacles can be uh, the Earth signs. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, um, we just got the bull here, so Taurus, and then we had the young Taurus energy here. Um, this, what I think this part knows is that when an opportunity presents itself, it needs to move swiftly into action in order to create the life and potentially the relationship uh, that it wants. 
and it believes there's maybe even the relationship that it wants is on its list, which would give it like, if I can, you know, if I can build this, choose this person, um, get married, you know, have the 2.5. I mean, we all know people that have, what am I saying? We all know people. I was a people. Um, you know, that we have this list, okay? So graduate high school, go to college, get married, have the 2.5, have the the house, the cars, the dogs, the things, the da, da, da. You know, that's on my list. And if I get those things accomplished on my list, then I'm worthy, then I'm acceptable, then I'm okay. And then we get, you know, the midlife crisis, which comes in. To re reevaluate things, but um, yeah, it could be that this is it. <sighs> okay, it just it moves from. Clean the garage, wash the car, be nice to your boss. There's no like marriage on this list, which is kind of interesting because it looks definitely like on this part, it's needing that, it's wanting that, it's wanting um, a relationship. And it may believe like if it behaves or moves when the opportunity strikes, it can create that, it can create that stable, uh, uh, foundational, ideal idea of marriage, the 2.5, and then that will give it validity. That will make the more scared part or the more wounded part um, feel better, safer. Um, no. Okay, what am I doing? Roll. Okay, again, well, guilt, okay. So yeah, there does seem to be something around childhood here, okay? I remember I said worrying about maybe some action taken in childhood, um, and it's really there to make sure, it seems to make sure, oh, look at her. Look at her, she's doing all the work, right? She's doing the ironing. She's got her little halo above her head. You know, she just, she just takes care of everything. Then maybe she doesn't have to feel guilty. Um, maybe guilty, guilty of anything that happened in the past, but you know, that can quickly move into shame, right? Okay, so what's, what am I afraid of? What's my fear? What is my fear? Did that flip? No. What's my fear? Is my fear, my fear, my fear, my fear. Sad wanted to come out. What is my fear? What am I afraid of? I have a fear. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, what's the problem? Let me do a little shuffle. Let's see, should I ask it in a different way? Okay. Okay. Um, what would make me feel safe? What would make me feel safe? What would make you feel safe, part? What would make you feel safe? 
say fur. What? <laughs> the bottom of the deck, soulmate. Okay. So it's going to need a lot, right? All right. So this was at the bottom of the deck earlier when pulled out guilt. So we've got service. Okay. You know, this person might uh, might be worried about being alone in their end, end days. So they really want to make sure they have a family. Uh, perfectionism. Well, here we have that. You know, if I can. Perseverance. Perseverance. An interesting one. It's kind of like there may be times when this self gets tired. It might, there may be times, and that's or maybe not that self, that part, but that part is there to keep motivating. The other parts maybe that want to quit that that are they just they can't keep going. And this part is there like with the ruler, you know, tapping on the table, tapping on the knuckles, tapping on the butt, you know, keep going. You gotta keep going. Um creation. And discovery. For some reason, I want to read the discovery card. There's a heart. Um, let's see. Oh, there's an owl. Are you trying to recapture a past oh, <laughs> that no longer fits? If you are presently upset or struggling with a difficult situation, you may be seeking to keep something that is far less than what you deserve. Am I happy in this situation? How is it benefiting me? The healing of predetermined agreements must be addressed. Awareness is healing. So... Okay, uh, let me give you an example of a predetermined agreement that might be kind of swirling around here a little bit if you're watching this as a reading. Um, a predetermined agreement can look like some, something like this. It's not discussed necessarily, but it's often assumed like if, if, I do X, Y, Z for you, then you will do X, Y, Z for me. Or if I do X, Y, Z for you, you will never leave me. That comes up a lot in relationships. Okay, and so that could be something that needs to be addressed with this person with this big list here, right? I, I'm doing all this stuff. Well, that's what I, you should do. How come you're not doing it? Or how come it's not working out that, you know, well, I don't know if it's not working out or not, but Why were you still, let's just say you had abusive parents. Why were you, I did all of this and you still were an ass to me. You still abused me. You still rejected me. You still weren't there for me. You know, like, let's just say, looking back at childhood. 
needing to heal that inner child. You don't have to do all this stuff in order to be worthy of love, of attention, of respect. The idea is leaving the past behind, a readiness for a new adventure, a willingness to venture into uncharted territory, a new level of self-care, keywords, uplift, journey, and commitment. Okay. And what do I know? <clears throat> or I'm sorry. How would I feel if I didn't have to work so hard? How would I feel if I didn't have to work so hard? What would it be like to not have to work so hard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to go on that journey. I'm going to go find myself. I'm going to follow my instincts. Okay? Quest and instincts. Right? It's the opposite of this discovery of being held back by the past. I can move forward with my instincts. I can go on my adventure. Okay. Sorry, these readings are so long. My intention was for it to be short. Under 30 minutes. Okay, I'm going to One more card, one more card, please. One more card from this card itself. Oops, I really wanted to know, Spirit. Poised. Okay, 48. Okay, on the precipice of doing something, on the precipice of taking a leap, leap of faith. Uh, what's going on? You know, are you ready to do this healing? Um, are you thinking about taking a journey, uh, but this part is holding you back? Um, 48, 48, 48. Being ready, bringing something to light, being at your best in confidence. You can be assured that you are ready for anything right now. You know what you need to do. Your skills are sharp. You've come to this place armed with wisdom and knowledge, and you sense a new phase of your life about to begin. People respond to your confidence and trust you. This is an auspicious time to begin new things. Okay, thank you. I uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Be well. Bye-bye.